When it comes to choosing a budget ECU for your beloved project car, what will it be? Will you choose a Speedduino or a Micro Squirt? In this video, I'll go over my experience of installing and running both of these systems and the pros and cons associated with them. I would like to preface by saying that neither one of these systems is bad. They have pros and cons, and I may seem biased towards one, but it doesn't mean that both of them aren't great in their own ways. It just means that my experience with these systems is different than yours, and for those who have no experience, I would like to share my opinion and try to help out those that are trying to make an educated decision on which system to use for their vehicle. Now, without further ado, let's get stuck into it. I want to compare Speedduino to Micro Squirt. These are the most entry-level ECUs that you can purchase for any one vehicle. Speedduino is very unique in that it is an open source project that is run by an Arduino. Let's go over the casing. So there's some very obvious differences here, being that this is an open source project on the Speedduino in that the case is just a 3D printed part that you can see here. It actually turns out okay. There's a few different styles you can get off Thingiverse and some files available from the community, but the mounting is not amazing. There are a few different holes on the Speedduino where you can mount it to the case and one back here as well that you can run with a standoff there. However, the mounting is not great and if you wanna keep this in a car during high temperatures, uh, especially if you live in a hot place, you definitely wanna print this case out of something a lot better than PLA. Perhaps some high temperature nylon or carbon nylon to keep them from warping. I have installed one of these into a Volvo 240 and the case definitely warped when it got really hot outside. So this right here is the, you know, the basics of the base of the base. You can just get this square box. It has a, uh, basically the same style lid that goes on top of it and this just sets inside of it with a few different screws. There's nothing inherently wrong with this other than if you print it out of the wrong material, you can have some pretty big issues with it warping, uh, getting in the car. The next is the micro squirt. And right away you will notice that the casing on the micro squirt is injection molded. It has nice hardware. And one of the biggest features that you'll notice physically is this plug right here. This 36 pin amp seal plug is very nice. It is a very nice form factor. The quality of the plug is very key to making this unit very sturdy and have a good quality to it that doesn't fall apart. In comparison, the Speedduino just has Phoenix connectors right here. You just put a flat blade screwdriver in the top of them and that's how you tighten them down. They are not great by any means, but they do work. You just have to individually run uh, all of the wires here and find a way to control them because you know, you'll just have a ton of wires sticking all over otherwise. So another part of the, the form factor that is a little bit different is the all of the map sensors for the micro squirt need to be external. There is no included map sensor on the micro squirt, which really is nice. A lot of modern ECUs have a map sensor built into them. However, micro squirt does not. I believe because they anticipate running alpha N on a lot of small engines and this typically would be put on a snowmobile or a motorcycle or something like that where it has very low vacuum and individual throttle bodies. So typically they're not uh, needed in certain circumstances where this is used, but you can also see on the Speedduino that there is a module 
for VR sense, uh, or sorry, VR signals. This is a VR digital, analog to digital converter. So it takes a variable reluctance and turns it into a digital signal. You actually have to buy this separately. So it just clips on here. Because this is an open source project and a lot of people make different hardware for it, this socket here is left to other manufacturers to make components for it. So I'll just put that there. Another key component of this is if we flip it over, the Arduino Mega 2560 sits on the back and it is actually removable. There are headers all along here that you can take it off and put it back on just like this. So you can switch out the actual computer. This is the actual module that does all the thinking. This board here is just an adapter or what you'd call a daughter board for the main Arduino board. So it just takes all the inputs from the engine and the outputs and converts them into a signal um, or a voltage that can be run off of the Arduino that sits underneath of it. Taking a closer look at the Speedduino, you'll see this area in here is the prototype area, the prototyping, and it gives you additional inputs and outputs for communicating with the Arduino on the backside. And basically all that means is that if you want to run launch control, like this wire right here is actually the input for launch control, you have to go in and solder in a pin and a wire to run that individually. Whereas with the Megascort, there's a dedicated uh, pin that you can use, or typically there are a number of inputs and you can just select which one you want to use at that time and change it in software. Let's take a closer look at the Microsquirt module. So as you can see, when we take the case apart, we are left with this nice molded piece. It's very stiff, seems very strong, especially on the ears and on the top, I have the same as well. As we get here, you'll see on the back here, it has once again printed onto the PCB. It has the pin legend. And then here are some pins here. You can also do modifications between these pins. You can put resistors and things to make additional injector outputs, or sorry, ignition outputs. This right here is the best part of the micro squirt is this nice 36 pin amp seal connector right here, sticking straight out the top, high quality, very strong pins. And then you can see here, this is SMD. So all of the components are soldered to the surface and they're placed in there with a special machine called a pick and place versus on the Speedduino, everything is through hole. So all of the components have a little hole that the ends of the component go through and then they are soldered in and clipped off on the backside. And all of these are soldered by hand, whereas the micro squirt modules are produced in a factory with high precision machines. So the chance of the hardware being bad is extremely minimal. Another small nice feature about the micro squirt is on the back here, you can see that we have the pinout. Let me bring it closer for you. 
so you can actually see what all of the pins do as a quick reference if you are installing this. So each of these pins is numbered 1 to 36. One thing that I can absolutely say of certainty is that Josh Stewart, the father and founder of Speedduino, is an absolute legend. He has spent many hours with me going over issues that I have had in particular with this, this unit installed into a BMW. And he took the time over Facebook Messenger to answer so many of my questions and was extremely helpful in getting this operational. So as far as support goes, yes, it's DIY, but the community is incredible and the people surrounding this project are very willing to help and share information. In contrast, there is a massive support community for Megasquirt products. Many times I have found on a forum an answer or on a Facebook page to anything that I'm looking for for these. There are lots and lots of people out there that have done projects with these and you'll find that many of them have done something similar or have had an experience that you are looking for and you can reach out to them as well. Also, DIY Autotune, if you purchase from them, they are more than happy to support their products. I have reached out to them in email and on Facebook groups many times and had my questions answered, especially from Andy Whittle. He is absolutely awesome and he has a YouTube channel that he goes over a lot of the basics for Megasquirt tuning and installation guides. So definitely both of these are very well supported. However, Microsquirt and Megasquirt products, since they have been around a very long time, they have a lot more information available in forums and other saved information on the internet that you can search. Let's go over some of the issues that I've ran into. The first Speedduino that I installed actually worked very well and didn't have any issues. However, on this particular unit, I could never get the timing to stop drifting. So I would lock the timing at zero or go into the settings and lock it at 10 degrees, different ways of doing it. I've even taken the whole ignition table and set it to zero. And no matter what, when I revved the motor, when I ran a timing light, the timing would drift. I talked with Josh Stewart about it. He helped me try to walk through it and set it up as best as we could and to still, still no avail to get this thing fixed. We ended up going to a micro squirt on that particular project because it was going to be turbocharged and I didn't want to run the risk of the timing drifting and blowing the motor. I understand that that is not everyone's situation. That was just this particular unit. The other unit I installed worked flawlessly. I had tried updating firmware and all sorts of different things to try to get this one to work. I don't know what is wrong, but I had so many issues with it that it was just easier to buy a micro squirt. I'm very familiar with the mega squirt products and I threw this in and it fired instantly and had zero issues the second that I wired in the mega squirt. So in my experience, I've had a lot less issues with mega squirt products, uh, almost next to none for the actual uh, hardware itself. It's mostly just me learning how to tune and set everything up on the micro squirt to get it to run right. Another note, when it comes to tuning both of these systems, the micro squirt versus the Speedduino, both of them use Tuner Studio, which is made by EFI Analytics. There is a free version that you can get, but if you would like to use the auto tune feature, the VE Analyze Live is what they call it right here, you have to pay for one of the upgraded versions, which is usually around $40. I highly suggest buying the upgraded version and also Megalog Viewer. These guys put a lot of time and effort into this software and I feel like just supporting them by getting their basic versions, a really good way to you can support them for the products that they've spent thousands of hours developing and allowing us to, to tune our cars. So highly suggest that, but you shouldn't have any real big difficulties. This 
tuning ignition and fuel maps is identical between the two systems. There are a lot of other little differences that you will run across, but as far as just getting a car tuned with ignition and fuel, they are the same. And I have used VE Analyze Live on both of them, made a car run just fine on either one of them. So don't uh, worry about that as far as the difference, it's pretty minor. My overall impressions on these two in my experience is that if you want something that just works straight away and gives you minimal issues, definitely go with the micro squirt. If you're into the DIY scene and you love messing around with stuff and you're okay with tinkering to get something to work and adjusting settings and tweaking little tiny things to make sure that every little thing on here works, I would choose Speedduino. Speedduino is an amazing project. In no way is this video intended to throw shade on Speedduino. It's just my experience telling you what you can expect when you work between both of these products. Speedduino is a very low level, as in very deep DIY project that you really need to know what you're doing or be willing to research a lot to figure out some of the things that are going on here and to get it just perfectly set up. It's not like you can't do it, it's designed to be simple for everyone to use. However, there is a lot going on here that you need to research and definitely read up on the manual. Not saying that that isn't the case with the Megasquirt, but Megasquirt has been around for a long time and they have a lot of years of R&D and experience under their belt to make this product possible. And just the manufacturing, the connector type, the robustness of everything and the components on here are worth it in my opinion over the Speedduino. If you had a project, something that needed to be really low budget and you wanna mess around and learn a little bit, this is this is the way to go maybe a school project or if you have a very inexpensive car or motorcycle or engine you want to run this this would definitely be a good way to go but if you want to experience the least amount of problems and the most amount of go time definitely i suggest a mega squirt product and if you're trying to stay in a very low budget micro squirt is the way to go there are a lot of other alternatives to this now in fact uh, i think now Max ECU has a micro, but it's over twice the cost um, of the micro squirt. They call it the Max ECU Mini, and I believe some others have very similar small ECUs as well. But in my opinion, you cannot beat the value of this if you're just trying to get a motor going. And this will do up to eight cylinders. Uh, however, it will not do a five cylinder for ignition, in at least that I have researched. So two, one, two, four, six, eight. And then this will do up to eight cylinders as well. And this guy will do semi-sequential and this will do four cylinder sequential or eight up to eight cylinders in batch. It just has four injector or ignition outs. So four ignition and four injector so it can do uh, sequential for a four cylinder, but that's about it. So very similar in as far as functionality, but you just have to work around the DIY aspect of the Speedduino. Feel free to reach out to me in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer any questions regarding the Micro Squirt or the Speedduino. I have installed three of these and five of these. So I have a little bit of experience going back and forth with these. I can share with you to my knowledge what I know about these and some of the problems I've ran into as well as some of the fixes that I've found for both of these.